Okay, well, that was really weird. Uh, we started our broadcast, and uh, all of a sudden it decided to implode. And this is the new broadcast, so I'm going to linger here and wait to see if you noticed or if you switched over to this new broadcast. In fact, while I'm waiting for you, let me see if I can even get into the old broadcast on Facebook to let you know that we are now here. Let's see. And because I'm not in a hurry, I'm going to make sure that you are on the same place as I am. Uh, let me see. Ooh, the, okay, I can see. I can see, I can see that you, oh, there's 18 of you in the new broadcast now, okay? So I think we're all on the same page. Um, I'm sorry for the confusion. Hello again, says Jimmy Naden. Um, for some reason, the broadcast decided to end on its own, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait a little longer so that I can see uh, that you, or many of you, or most of you are with us. Um, it's funny because just this morning I got an update on the software that we used to broadcast and I said to myself, nah, I'm going to install it after the broadcast. So it is quite possibly that there is some glitch going on and that this is in the process of being resolved. So we're going to start our day slowly and, um, because of this snafu. Mark asks, did the internet gerbils, gerbils, it's not gerbils, it's gerbils, right? Fall off the wheel. Yes, apparently the internet creatures are, you know, creating problems, but nothing that cannot be solved. As I was saying earlier today, you know, we are going to be talking about, um, we're going to be talking about tacos. I discovered a new taco place uh, that I want to tell you about. And we have important news about vaccination uh, we have interesting fake news. I need to find out if I still have my my fake news little icon, which might be actually quite handy. And if it if we don't have it, then we know that it's fake news. So anyhow, um, we are going to slowly get started with the news. And again, apologies that the, the about the transmission crashing. I don't know exactly what happened but hopefully we'll be able to continue on with our broadcast. And we'll, we'll, of course, get into our comments in the second half of the show. So here we go, slow and steady, starting with the news. Okay, for starters, uh, Mexico president, president Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador has just announced that he is advancing the application of COVID vaccines for the 40 to 49 age group to the month of July. I wish I could get excited about this because we're still waiting for the 50 to 59, um, but hopefully um, that will be the case. In addition to this announcement, he also said, uh, President Lopez Obrador, that he expects Mexico to be done with all vaccination by the end of October of this year as opposed to March of 2022. Things are going well, said the president. We cannot cry victory yet, but it's quite evident that the number of cases is decreasing along with the number of deaths. In the same press conference, Foreign Affairs Chancellor Marcelo Ebrard announced that during the month of June, Mexico will receive 34 million vaccines, uh, which is approximately the same number of vaccines received during the past six months. So um, this is good to know. It's good to know that Mexico has found these, has created these purchases or alliances or whatever you want to call them, so that the vaccination program in our country moves faster than anticipated. Of course, I'm still sort of um, waiting for the announcement for vaccines for 50 to 59 year olders. We still have no news, um, but as we mentioned the other day, this is probably due to the fact that there's a shortage on stuff needed to do the vaccination, such as syringes and needles and so forth and so on. But we keep having our fingers crossed and hoping for a, a, an announcement to be unveiled sometime soon. Um, 
I don't mean to take this lightly, of course, but I have to find a way to put out these kinds of news. I suppose some people must have been in a bad mood this past weekend as Mexico registered 115 murders around the country on Sunday, making it the deadliest day of the year so far and the second deadliest since uh, Mexico President Andres Manuel López Obrador became president of Mexico. At times, I regret the fact that media outlets report these figures instead of focusing on positive things. But at the same time, if they are not brought to light, how can we expect the government to feel pressure to improve on matters of security? And of course, um, that was 115 murders on Sunday, but a total of 280 murders through the weekend, which is just, just very sad. Um, moving on in, with the news, I want to tell you that uh, President López Obrador organized an event in which he formally asked China for forgiveness for the massacre of 1911, in which over 300 Chinese residents living in the city of Torreón in Coahuila were killed by a local mob and the revolutionary forces of Francisco y e. Madero. And um, uh, the ambassador, the Chinese ambassador in Mexico, Zhu Qingqiao, was present at the event where he thanked the president for the petition and assured that with this act, the scars left behind by this tragedy are healed. I quote, the shadow of what happened in Torreón over 100 years ago has dissipated and the friendship between China and Mexico has become stronger through the passing of time, end quote. And you're probably wondering, well, what happened in Torreón? Well, I'm going to give you, um, oh, you just saw an announcement about vaccines for 50 to 59? Michal says, oh, this is good to know. Nothing, I, I didn't see anything printed earlier today, but if this is the case, I will definitely keep an eye for it. I hope it's not today. Anyhow, back to back to the massacre. Uh, back in 1911, uh President Porfirio Diaz was in, was well. Porfirio Diaz was the president of Mexico, and he had um, he had uh, promoted a lot of international relationships with different countries, particularly with China. And of course, Chinese uh, migrate uh, migration to Mexico had started back in the 17th century. But uh, during his presidential period, he fostered a lot of Chinese industry and Chinese business to. Um, to come to Mexico, and um, and on May fifth, on Cinco de Mayo, on May fifth, nineteen eleven, uh, a revolutionary leader named Jesus Flores made a public speech in nearby Gomez Palacio in the state of Durango, in which he claimed that the Chinese were putting Mexican women out of jobs, that they had monopolized the gardening and grocery businesses that they were accumulating vast amounts of money to send back to China and were, quote, vying for the affection and companionship of local women. He concluded by demanding that all the people from China or of Chinese origin be expelled from Mexico. And one witness, one witness recalled him stating that, therefore, it was necessary even a patriotic duty to finish with them. Well, this these words escalated and spread around like wildfire, and this resulted in over 300 Chinese residents being um, murdered without no apparent reason. And this is one of those sordid chapters in Mexican history that continues to haunt us. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has been very keen in seeking forgiveness for these things. Um, and of course, he's been knocking on the door of the Spanish government asking for them to seek forgiveness or ask for forgiveness for all the massacre that they committed in Mexico during the Spanish conquest. Um, okay, so there is a link here. Let's take a quick look at this link that Michal is sharing. And let me copy and paste it if I can, because this is, um, can I even copy paste this? 
Yes, I can. Give me one second, uh, because this is important news. I want to break my rhythm for a second and see if I can bring that up on the screen and see what this is about. And here it is. Ah, okay. So, um, pregnant women and people in their 50s will get vaccinated starting on the 20th. That is two days from today. Let me translate this bit of news. Let me get rid of that horrible MGM ad if I can, or maybe I won't be able to. This is what the news item says. Um, the Secretary of Wellbeing in Jalisco informed that the vaccination campaign for adults 50 to 59 and pregnant women will be from the 20th to the 25th of May. For the first group, um, that will be of the uh, that will be in La Lija, and the vaccine to be applied will be the AstraZeneca vaccine. While um, women, pregnant women, will be vaccinated at the Naval Hospital with the Sinovac vaccine. It is important to do the pre-registration for uh, uh, so that the day the vaccination um, takes place is more fluid in the process. Uh, along the same lines. Uh, people that are part of uh, our sanitary region will be also to be taken care of during this campaign. So it's not only Puerto Vallarta, it's other municipalities that are part of the same, um, the same um, region. And, um, and that's basically it. So we don't have many more details. All we know is that vaccination for the age group will be at La Lija, um, and uh, if I recall, La Lija is the sports place in Pitillal, uh, but we don't know yet how the, it's going to be organized. Chances are that it's going to be organized by last name, as they've been doing all the vaccinations here in the state of Jalisco. So please, if you are between these ages, keep your dates as open as possible between the 20th and the 25th of May. And I thank you, Mihal, for sharing this headline. This is the first I've seen about this, and I'm sure it's not the last headline we will see about vaccination for our group. Yay, finally. So on vaccination day, if it's a morning affair, chances are that coffee and headlines will be broadcasting live from La Lija. We'll have to see what happens. I am very excited about this. Anyhow, I am going to uh, now continue with the things that I had scheduled for today, uh, which include um, asking for your opinion on something that is rather important to me. But first, let us take a look at the weather. Mostly clear for the hour. That is such a boring statement. Let me see if I can click. Ah, there you go. Snarky Weather says, you're just a few more exposures away from developing skin cancer. Um, fine. What can I say? I don't know what to tell you. Um, the temperature right now is 26 degrees Celsius, feels like 28. Humidity is under 50%. It's actually 49%. And our temperature in Fahrenheit is 79 degrees. Our weather forecast uh, for today is we're going to have a clear day with a high temperature of 30, low temperature of 21. Uh, tomorrow we can expect another clear day, high temperature of 30, low temperature of 20. Uh, I'm so happy about the vaccine, I cannot hold myself. Uh, and on Thursday, uh, we are going to have another clear day, high temperature of 30, low temperature of 21. I am giddy, I am just so itchy to get pricked. Um, and vaccinated too. It's not even funny. Let's see. Uh, what else do we have? What else do we have? Okay, so before we continue with a couple of um, light news and of course Taco Tuesday, I want to seek your opinion on something because it affects the, 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 the type of content that we offer here at Coffee and Headlines. On the one hand, I am very uh, I feel very strongly about presenting and sharing information that is trustworthy and, and, and incredible. And on the other hand, we are also of the spirit of trying to support new businesses and new ventures of one kind or another. And I feel that is really important because any newcomer deserves all the, 
all the, the, the support we can provide. But there's an interesting case here with performers. Um, in the past, you've shown in polls that we've conducted here, Coffee and Headlines, that you are not all that interested in live performances in Puerto Vallarta, um, which is unfortunate because, um, you know, it's, um, you know, live performances can be a lot of fun. There's all kinds of different live performances for all kinds of tastes. So I, I, I don't always know what to do when I get a performer that I have no connection with, that I know nothing about. And, and this performer or a performer sends me a poster to promote here on Coffee and Headlines. Um, when I promoted events, I promoted events that seem interesting to me. Um, and I have to this date felt a little uneasy about promoting a performer that I've never heard before. So the question is, and feel free to share your comments, um, you know, do you want to hear a lot about performers that we don't know anything about? Or do you only want to hear about performers that yours truly knows something about? Um, I don't have a preference either way because ultimately what is most important to me is that you find the content interesting, but... To be honest with you, I don't want to all of a sudden receive flyer after flyer after flyer after flyer, and all of a sudden um, the broadcast becomes just a bunch of announcements. So if you have any thoughts about this matter, one way or the other, please feel free to show them and share them, and I will take a look at them in a second once we get into chit-chat mode. But before that... I want to tell you a couple of extra headlines that I have sitting around here. The first one has to do with rain. Authorities have announced that based on mathematical models, a rain season this year won't begin until the end of June, although we can expect more rain to begin during this month. In the meantime, we can continue to be grateful for whatever rain we can get. And now we wrap up our leisurely news with a little bit of fake news. How about some fake news? Have you ever heard of luciferine? Luciferine. It is a generic term for the light-emitting compound found in organisms that generate bioluminescence, like fireflies. You know, they glow, they, 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 they light up at night. So this they do that thanks to this light-emitting compound called luciferin. Luciferins typically undergo an enzyme-catalyzed reaction with molecular oxygen. That's me being geeky. And the term comes from the Latin lucifer, which means light bearer. Well, it seems that some Facebook and Twitter users have their panties all bunched up claiming that the Moderna vaccine contains luciferine and posting messages along the lines of God have mercy on us because Satan, Satan is taking over. So apparently luciferine does appear in a patent registered by Moderna, the pharmaceutical company, back in 2012. But this has nothing to do with the formula used in the anti-COVID vaccine that is presently being distributed. Now, I just wanted to share this because I saw the headline. It made me laugh. But just in case, if you don't see me tomorrow, it will likely be because this was not fake news and Lucifer came to get me. But um, boom where is my put um boom sound? Because it's very timely. There you go. Okay, so I'm seeing all your comments come up and I'm loving it. I'm not going to pay attention to them just yet. Let us go to Taco Tuesday first and then we will take a look at all your comments and I'm glad that many of you are here. Our numbers are up. We're up to over 100 viewers, so it's always a pleasure to get together with you. Um, yesterday, I found myself torn between going to a taco place that I already know, but then I had to run some errands around Plaza Caracol. So I very quickly got onto the Google map to find any kind of taqueria that I could find that would be along the way and what do you know I found one and uh, I'd never been to it before which is bound to happen at some point or another because I mean even though I've been to many taco places here in town you know 
there are many places that I don't know. And that's my job to get to know these places so that I can recommend them to you. And fortunately, I took a chance on a new taqueria that I'm happy to recommend. And this place is called El Punto del Taco. It is a small, sweet little taqueria that is about a block and a half away from Francisco Medina Asensio, right around where Office Depot is located. Um, their menu features standard uh, tacos made of beef, asada, adobada, but they also include tacos de guisado, which is tacos made of stews and preparations such as chicharrón and salsa verde, a pork rind in green sauce. And they also include um, um, battered fish tacos and marlin tacos. So they have a couple of seafood selections. I was delighted to see the the menu and i was delighted to see that for a small place they do make their tortillas from scratch at the moment in which you place your order for your tacos and the tortillas were a nice size tortilla i was very pleased to see that they also make their aguas frescas on the spot and i was i love their guava their guava agua fresca because i was running around errands yesterday in the afternoon it was really warm out there and um and uh, I had like a big, a big one of those. And of course, then my tacos came. I ordered, I started with a birria taco, which you can see here on the left, and a chicharron taco on the right-hand side. These tacos are either served um, con todo or sin todo, which means with everything or not with everything. And con todo, in this particular case, means that they add... Um, cilantro and beans and also a little bit of shredded cabbage uh, of course beyond that i placed my own choices of green salsa and uh and and pickled onions and it was just absolutely good so the tacos were great after these two tacos i i was still hungry so i ordered a third um beef taco but my mind was elsewhere and i remember taking the first bite of the taco and i went oh fuck i didn't photograph this one but you know, it, you can imagine what the tacos look like by looking at these two. And um, it was a great place. It was a great place to discover um, right in Colonia Diaz Ordaz, which is that tiny little neighborhood located between Plaza Caracol and Versalles. So if you're ever running errands in that neck of the woods, um, feel free to consider this place and um, and check it out on your own. Now, let me show you the video as it turned out. And this is the video that we are going to be featuring or are already featuring in our uh, Tuesday Taco Tuesday map. Take a look. And of course, if we turn over to our members only Taco Tuesday map, we will now find this little spot over here that shows the location of El Punto del Taco. Again, it's only um, about a block and a half away from Francisco Medina Asensio. And right where my head is right now is where Office Depot is located. So that gives you 
an idea of where you can find this sweet little taqueria. And of course, if you want access to the map, which you can definitely enjoy from your cell phone, from your laptop, from your tablet, if you have Wi-Fi, you um, want to consider becoming a supporting member here at Coffee and Headlines, and then you will have access to this little uh, treat for, for those of you who find enough value in Coffee and Headlines that you are supporters, something that Luna and I thank very much. Um, now, back to your comments. Let me take a quick look. Again, I see a lot of, of comments about the fact that we had an interesting start today with uh, the software crashing. Um, I'm always happy to see you here, Candace. It's great to see you. Uh, let's see. James is back in PB. We've been hearing how your date of arrival has been getting closer. I'm glad you made it here safe and sound. This is wonderful. Um, why so many dead people on the weekend were all around Jalisco? No, Angelica, this was all around the country. Um, we don't have specific numbers, of the, although they could be easily obtained as to how many murders happened in Jalisco. But again, uh, there's a lot of violence going on in the country. We've said this before. This has to do, um, but uh, for the most part, but not necessarily entirely, with the electoral period and the delicate relationship that goes on between our governors our politicians and the the organized crime. Uh, let's see, let's see what else we have. Oh my God, Logan, you took time to join us from your two day vacation in Yelapa. I am so envious, but in a good way that you uh, that you went away. If your ears bust last night, it's because I had dinner with lovely, lovely friends, and how nice it is to get together with dear friends these days. Um, let me see what else. Um, let's see what else we say. I love how you say the Mexico president's name. I can't get it out of my mouth as smooth. Well, sometimes I stumble, especially when my coffee is too sweet because my nose, my, my mouth just goes like, <laughs> but that's just me. Uh, let's see. Uh, I saw your comment. I see your comments about the United States apologizing or not apologizing. Uh, we're not going to get into American politics because we don't. Um, but um, I refuse to believe uh, that any country would not own up to at least some of their um, snafus. Um, but that's just me being an idealist, and we don't need to worry about that right now. Let me see what else we have uh, thank you, Michal. Well, I got really happy about the vaccine news. I've been just waiting and yeah. <laughs> so I'm itching. I'm itching to see, um, more information. Uh, Lynn says, what are you talking about? I love live performances. Well, I love live performances too, but again, I have, um, I have, um, I have in the past shared these polls with you. Um, Vallarta, Heather Wilson. Heather Wilson says, Paco, no, I don't want to hear about anything you yourself have not experienced. I appreciate that, Heather, but, you know, the, here's a challenge. I know that I know a lot about certain things, but I don't know a lot about others. Um, I couldn't tell you what a great gourmet restaurant is necessarily because I'm not skilled in that effect. And I have very specific musical tastes. So chances are that there are things out there that I'm not going to enjoy, like golf. I don't enjoy golfing, but I would be unfair to not mention things that have to do with things that I don't experience. So it's it's a delicate balance. I want to make sure, bottom line, that the content here continues to be enlightening, informative, inspiring for you all. And that's the most important thing to me. Lisa says, please promote live music. I have worked in the music industry all my life and artists need all the support they can get. Artists need all the support they can get. See, Lisa, you know, this is not about you. Oh my God, there goes the finger. This is not about you, but when I read things like artists need all the support they can get, well, you know, um, bakers need all the support they can get. Single mothers need all the support they can get. Uh, we all need all the support we can get. And I 
don't, there are parts of me that just don't jive with this notion that, oh my God, I'm an artist, support me. It's a complicated issue. It's a complicated issue. And, um, and that's just my, my, my reaction to what you're saying. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with you. I'm just thinking, well, don't we all need all the support we can get? Um, James chimes in, I would love to hear about unique performers that are relevant to Puerto Vallarta. You often have a unique Mexican perspective that I overlook as a gringuito. Well, let me tell you where, where I focus on, James. When I hear about a performance, and, and I do this frequently, you know, so when somebody says to me, come see my show, usually I will ask, what is so compelling about your show that I should go? And this is not me being arrogant or anything. It's just simply, okay, tell me more. Tell me more about what makes your show special. What makes your show something that, I, that will make me get off my comfortable chair and leave my crochet projects alone or my kitty cat alone for two hours to go enjoy you. And a lot of times you ask artists that very basic question, what makes your show special? Or new restaurants, what makes your new restaurant special? When an artist can say something compelling and convincing and persuasive, I'm all over it. But oftentimes it is sad how artists don't know how to do that and and people don't know how to do that list events in the notes that is uh, that is a good idea because that way they show up in the show notes they don't necessarily interfere with the flow of the program um only the most important performances well again that's you know it's important is based on whose opinion um but but i appreciate that obviously we we get some fabulous important performances for example for gay pride um, the, 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 there's this drag queen that's coming to Puerto Vallarta for the first time to perform. Her name is Bianca del Rio. He is hugely offensive, but hysterically funny. That is an important performance. And we'll certainly be talking about that because we don't get that quality of performers in town. Now, drag queens may not be for everyone, but she is important. Um, let's see what else. Michael offers a very even thing that says, you know, I want to hear about everyone. And you can always say that you don't know much about them. Again, I, we can certainly do that. I just hope we don't end up getting a lot of requests for, you know, do a shout out, do a shout out, do a shout out. Um, a calendar of events for the week would be nice. No editorial comments are needed. Dory, that is a high maintenance affair. There are already other websites and other sources of information that have calendars of events. I myself look at the Facebook calendar of events, usually on Fridays, to see what's going on on the weekend or for the whole entire week. And I've shown you that link in the past. So there's no need to repeat what is already happening elsewhere. Um... Posters, flyers are already on PV, Facebook posts. I would prefer your knowledge and opinions. Thank you very much for that, Don. Um, David leaves this decision to me. This is my baby. I like seeing live performances when in town. Either way, I enjoy and appreciate what you do for us every day. Well, this is this may be my baby, but it's also your baby in a sense that it takes two to tango. If I make a decision that does not affect viewership uh, favorably, then... Um, you know, what are we going to do? Candace says, I love live performance, especially yours, Paco. Oh, thank you very much for that. <laughs> I haven't been on stage for a while and I'm itching to get back. And Candace went to see Stevie Hart last night at Act Two. Open Rooftop Theater is fabulous. Um, I'd be compelled, although this is not the place to do it, uh, to ask Candace, to ask you, Candace, you know, what was so fabulous about this performance? Um I feel that if a few of us have seen the show and it's a very good show, then it's worth a chat about it. Absolutely agreed. You know, I totally agree with you, Sheila. Uh, let's see. Uh, de -de -da -de -da -da. Please promote and we will make our own decisions. Different strokes for different folks. Thank you for that. Um, how does one grow if we don't go out on a limb and try something new all on our own? Absolutely. That's how I ended up at this taco place. 
uh, let's get their posters out and we can decide if we want to check them out or not. Always looking for a new adventure. Marie, when you experience the amount of incoming mail that I get for coffee and headlines uh, with inquiries of all kinds, including some colorful hate mail on occasion, then you will rethink your stance on this matter. Um, let's see what else we have. I'm in favor of selective promotion, Matthew says. Um, thank you very much. Michael loves the term gringuito. I think it's a sweet term. Um, let's see. I am skipping because there's a bunch of these, but I thank you so much for your insight. It really gives me a sense as to where we want to go. Um, let's see. I think it's nice when you mention what you are including in the show notes. Sometimes I only check them because you said I'll put a link in the show notes. Well, Terry, we always put everything in the show notes, including some things that may come up during the broadcast that um, that I had not scheduled to put in the show notes. The show notes actually are written before the show, and that allows me to update the, upload them immediately after. Um, Chef Kali says, hi, Paco and everyone. I just let you know that I did open a new business of seafood at Mercado de Aramara in El Rincón Culichi, Rinco Salufos. Okay, congratulations, Chef. I would ask you, what makes your seafood business amazing? Uh, and I don't mean to be nasty or... Or, or have an attitude in asking that question in a city that is right by the ocean where there are a gazillion seafood places. What makes your seafood place compelling? Uh, why should we go visit it? And I'm not asking you to answer me. You know, when you work in publicity and advertising, I mean, we all need to find our niche. So my wish for you is that you have a lot of success with your restaurant, but that you also find that uniqueness about it that will set it aside from other places. For example, in looking at El Punto del Taco, the, the taqueria that we went to today, I was delighted to see that they not only have asada and adobada, which is what taquerias usually have, but they also have a little bit of seafood and a little bit of birria, and um, that may or not compete with a, a specific seafood taqueria or a specific birria taqueria, but the fact of the matter is that this place has a little bit of everything and that makes it special. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's see, let's see. Jorge, where have you been? Um, let's see what else. Oh, Gary, rub it in. Thank you very much. No, I'm glad that you're enjoying a vacation in uh, Mexico's Caribbean. Lovely. Um, is there a rise in violence in Buceria? Asking for a friend. Lynn, I have no idea. If I, I have not seen any headlines to that effect, so unfortunately, I cannot answer that question. Oh, my God, El Punto del Taco is watching. Qué gusto que nos haya visitado. How nice of you to visit. I am so glad you guys are here and we will definitely share uh, the link so that you can have it. Vamos a compartir la liga para que la puedan tener ustedes. Um, let's see what else. Let's see what else. I appreciate your attention to accessibility, but don't expect you to be an expert. An expert. Thank you very much for that. I am not an expert in anything, Terry. My former boss, John Uden at Vallarta Lifestyles, used to call me a milusos, which is, you know, a master of a lot of things or a, a, a good person at, at a lot of things, but not a master at anything. Um, um, yes, bakers need all the support we can get. Well, you know, Live Facebook broadcasters, we need all the support we can get, too. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Bianca, wow. Yes, Bianca, where and when? Bianca del Rio is advertised in the Gay Pride calendar. I don't have it handy, but it's happening before the end of May. I believe she's going to be performing up at Mantamar in the rooftop place. I'm not entirely sure. But yes, Bianca del Rio is going to be here. Um, I certainly want to hear Seth Sykes has another show. Um, 
trust me, I'm, I wanted to go see him, but I was waiting for my, my, for my vaccine. And, um, and if, when he comes back, I definitely want to go see Seth Sykes because he is absolutely wonderful. Uh, dun, da, da, din, dun, dun. Uh, I had the privilege to see Bianca del Rio live years ago before she was on Drag Race. Very witty and one of the sharpest tongues in the biz. I know that the the man, I forget his name, the man behind Bianca del Rio, the actor that performs the character, has been on vacation here in Puerto Vallarta before. So it is nice uh, to, to see him here. Anna asks, what kind of live performance do you do? What kind of live performance do you do? <laughs> I love it. I give music appreciation lectures. I stop singing, playing, and doing other kinds of things or accompanying people a while back. But when I get on stage, I thrive talking about music or, you know, giving lectures about this, that, and the other. But giving lectures about music is my meat and potatoes. I did this at several venues here in Puerto Vallarta, including the Palm and Encanto, and then some at Los Mangos Public Library and other places. And then I stopped doing it because of the pandemic. But uh, now that things are starting to clear up, I am uh, itching to get back on stage and share musical evenings that sometimes feature live musicians as well to demonstrate some of the things that we're talking about. So that is what uh, yours truly does on stage. Um, let's see. Went to the new seahorse that restaurant that took over Bistro Teresa's. They had th the three tenors singing. I imagine you refer, Kathleen, to the place that is up on the rooftop in front of City Hall. If that is the place, I'm so very happy to see that it, the place is being put to good use because the view from up there is magnificent. Um, could you show us one more time how to share, search up past show topics? Lynn, all you have to do, let me show you, is uh, go to pacoojeda.com. That is the website that you see on every broadcast. And there is a search button here. So you click on that and you enter whatever you want to search. For example, yesterday somebody asked me, do you know anything about this project called Casa Museo? Uh, and I said, well, I do. And then this person asked, well, can you give me more details? And I said, well, I can give you some attention today during the broadcast. And here we are. So if I type Casa Museo and I hit return, I see that there's a result here for Casa Museo. And I can see that this was brought up on... Uh, March 6, 2021, it says here, Puerto Vallarta will finally have a worthy museum. And if you click on continue reading or click on the headline, then you get access to the entire broadcast and the show notes for that date. Easy as pie. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Live shows seem to be too tourist priced. Well, don't get me started, Will. Don't get me started. Um, let's see what else. Uh, we live in PV for the ocean, beach, people, food, and live performances. Good for you, Rob. Good for you. Um, met the charming Michael before during dinner at Bravo's last week. Michael is one of the most charming people in the business and in person. He is a fantastic human being. And his restaurants are delightful. Let's see what else. What was the lovely word you used to describe Abel at all things, master of none, por favor? Piece of cake, I'll put it up on the screen. It is, some, it is a term that is used quite frequently in Mexico. And that term is mil usos. Ooh, that's so small. Let you go. There you go. Mil usos. Um, it, it, it literally means a thousand uses. So when a person is a mil usos, it is someone that has expertise in many different areas. It is a common expression in Spanish. Um, and, um, and there you have it. My boss used to say that I was a mil usos, and he appreciated that. I've always considered myself a mil usos, and I think I blame that on uh, curiosity. 
Kathleen confirms that it's the place that is up on the roof um, from City Hall. Um, Seahorse is is the name of the restaurant. I haven't been to it, um, but um, I have seen the view. And the view from up there is it's a really, really gorgeous view. For anybody that is having a first-time dinner here in Puerto Vallarta, it's one of those great places to take someone. Um, oh, what a great topic. What a great topic. We'll have to consider that sometime in the near future. Best places to take first timers for dinner in Puerto Vallarta. Hold your suggestions because we're almost about to wrap the show. But uh, we should we should talk about that sometime in the near future. You tell me what you think about that. Um, and that brings us to the end of our broadcast. Thank you, Michal, for pointing out the fact that uh, vaccines are coming up. Now I'm going to be itching. Uh, looking at more news about this as the days go by. And um, that's all we have for today. Tomorrow is Walking Wednesday. We'll be walking in a, a, to a new re a neighborhood, new neighborhood for me that I happened to find myself at the other day when I was visiting a friend and I figured, oh, I bet the folks at Coffee and Headlines would like to know more about this neighborhood. So between now and then, stay happy, stay kind, stay curious, take chances and share your experiences with us. We always want to hear about how things go for you, what you recommend, and so forth and so on. Have a great day, and I'll see you sometime soon.